Okay, here we have the Italian Carcano 1938, or it's just called the Model 38 short rifle in 6.5 by 52 millimeter caliber. It's a very interesting variant of the uh, Carcano line, um, and there's a lot to kind of talk about. First thing is where this model gained. Uh, infamy or became highly talked about. It's always referred to as the model for the Kennedy assassination rifle. Um, you can look this up. If you go online and look into the rifle and that, you can find in uh, Encyclopedia and that uh, detailed description of this, the FBI reports. Um, as the story goes, uh, Oswald seen an advertisement in either uh, gun magazine or newspaper to buy a rifle from a sporting goods store in, uh, I think it was Graham Sporting Goods in Chicago, Illinois. And back in those days, you could just buy a rifle or handgun just like if you bought a, a hammer or any other tool. <clears throat> you just sent the money in and they mailed it to you. There was, uh, that was for 1968 where the Federal Firearms License and all that other stuff come in. So back in them days, Oswald went, and supposedly the advertisement was for a Carcano uh, 9128 Troop Special Carbine with a scope attached to it. Uh, they'd go and these distributors would take these guns, drill and tap on the side, and put a scope on there and sell it as, as, a, as a hunting rifle. So Graham, when he got the order, Oswald obviously mailed the order into him. There was no internet then. And uh, when he received the order, he said, man, I'm out. So he called up <clears throat> his supplier and said, I got an order for one of those Italian carbines. Uh, I'd like to fill it. And the guy goes, well, I don't have any, but I got a batch of these short rifles, which instead of an 18-inch barrel, is a 21-inch long barrel. And it's still in the 6.5, because probably he ordered ammunition. Uh, you know, at that time, probably there were lots of surplus ammo available, you know, large quantities of it. So they ended up substituting his order and sending them this rifle. And this is the model and the caliber that was used in the Kennedy assassination. And you can look this up. Uh, there's a lot of sources online. You can get all the detailed information about it. So I thought I'd put that in there before I get a bunch of questions. but. That's what kind of made this particular model uh, famous or noteworthy. <clears throat> okay, as for what this gun is, also this gun, a lot of people uh, believe it's kind of rare because uh, they didn't produce a lot of them. And we'll get into that here in a little bit. We'll go on to the story of this. It started with the uh, model 1938 rifle. I believe what the Italians were doing is they were trying to come up after World War I with a newer rifle because uh, the whole system, the model uh, 1891, was kind of outdated. They realized that they would probably want to improve it. And because of the economic situation in that, in between uh, the two world wars in those years, it really didn't move along with it. A lot of bureaucracy there. From the book I was learning, there's different uh, branches of the government or the military trying to develop things. And until they came around to the Spanish Civil War, uh, the Italians, the Germans, the Russians, everybody was kind of involved a little, and sent advisors and were checking out and testing their equipment out. And uh, the Italians realized that their rifle system was outdated. Modern warfare, they needed uh, <clears throat> a different type of rifle. But I guess from this book, what I've been reading about here, this book here, and this is where I'm getting the information from. I guess the idea was, instead of revamping a whole new gun, the first idea was we got to get a better caliber. So that's where the 7.3 millimeter came in. And Basically, all they did was beef up, put a larger bullet, Spitzer bullet, get rid of the old torpedo bullet, and make it a, a little bit bigger, have a little bit more velocity and power to it. 
And the idea of doing that was so you didn't have to modify the action. Like um, the 8 millimeter conversions, you have to modify the bolt, the action, the clips don't work. Uh, with the 7.3 millimeter, it would just be a simple thing of re-lining uh, or re-barreling the rifles or reboring them out. It's mentions in here they were experimenting with boring out worn out old barrels. The reason they did that is because two reasons. Uh, if you look in the model 91 rifles, they had that variant that says uh, tube or tube, you know, in Italian tube where it was relined. Uh, in the book it mentions that at one time during the depression there was a shortage, I guess, of uh, material to make barrels, new barrels. So the Italians were relining the guns to recycle them and refurbish their firearms to keep them up. So the Model 38 come around and, and if you look at it, when we look at it, you can see where they were trying to come up with a one main rifle, I think was the idea. Because the guy in the book mentions that, but there's kind of like no written evidence of it, but what this model did is they went to a fixed site, uh, which was set at 300 yards. So they simplified the site, which by World War II everybody was simplifying the sights on their guns and that. They went with a shorter barrel, 21 inch barrel, instead of, uh, I think it was 26 on the uh, 41 rifle. The long rifles are quite long. So a shorter barrel, um, and then they had a bayonet, which I don't have one, but I got a repro coming and we'll do a video on it. They had an interesting bayonet that went on here and then it came in a sheath, but there was a button where you could fold it down. So it was like a, you can keep it permanently attached or leave it on the rifle without having to put it back in the scabbard on your equipment. So you could kind of see where they were going with, they're gonna just eliminate the three different models and have one, okay? One rifle for everybody. And I think that's where they were going with it. So they were satisfied with the caliber and they went on and started producing them. And then they ended World War II. And this is when they realized that this was really not a good idea. That production, they didn't have enough time to produce enough weapons to totally re-equip their army. So now they had problems. They had two different types of ammunition, two different types of uh, firearms, and there's confusion where, uh, you know, all it is is scaled up 6.5, so you can put a 6.5 cartridge in here and, and, and fire it on the 7.3 models, and probably the 7.3s you might be able to jam the oversized cartridge in there, so that, that was a big problem. And that's why you'll see the stocks marked with the caliber and the rear sights are marked with the caliber. This kind of created a problem. So they decided it's not a good idea, let's go back to the 6.5 caliber. Now the Model 38 in all three variants, and another odd thing is, I don't have examples of them, they're kind of hard to find. The Model 38 7.3 uh, was manufactured the short rifle, they converted cavalry carbines by reboring them out. They recycled them, the ones with worn out barrels. And uh, they also made a troop special with an 18 inch barrel or 17 and 3 quarters inch on uh, two carbines, which I thought was unusual. But I think the game plan was they were into this recycling, so when they started producing the new guns, they'd recycle the old guns also and issue them, you know. Just save money and produce more weapons. Kind of makes sense. Well, all this come to a halt when he entered the war. I don't really know what exact year it was. I think 19, yeah, 1940. So they really didn't have enough weapons to uh, supply the army. So they stopped, decided to go back to the 6.5. So. 6.5 millimeter production went on and they just kept making troop specials and the uh, cavalry carbines. But where these guns get the designation 38, be 91 38 on the two carbines, is they all kept 
after this point in time, most of them. There are some arsenals that still made the adjustable sights, but all the weapons after that had this fixed type sight on the back. Okay, and since there were uh, guns and also be stamped with the caliber on the fixed sight because they produced uh, a different caliber gun in there, and that stayed with it till the end of the war. So you had your different versions made with this fixed sight on the carbines and that. Some arsenals did produce uh, cavalry carbines and that with the old-fashioned uh, adjustable sight in the rear. They never made one with fixed sight, so you will find them with wartime dates 40, 41, with a different sight in the carbines, okay, either the troop special or the uh, cavalry carbine. And I guess what they did is Part of the refurbishing program was to use the stocks. Well, they realized they couldn't. With the short rifle model, they couldn't reuse the old rifle stocks. So they had to make new stocks. Now, why they went on to produce the short rifle, I guess the lines were set up, and they produced the Model 38 in the 6.5 caliber, and that's what this gun is. It was produced... Uh, you get the production dates here from 1940 to 1941 okay so a couple of years there was a total production of this gun of 660,800 of these were made now the 38 in the 7.35 the total production of all three types which were the refurbished uh, troop specials and cavalry carvings and the new rifles that had a total production of 645,000 rifles for all three variants. 95,000 of those guns were given to Finland and uh, the Finns, you know, you hear different things, the Finns didn't like them, whatever, but after the war they were probably all stored somewhere and set aside. And I think Finland went on to use a different type of weapon. So these were probably put in storage. And sometime in the 50s, one of the uh, surplus arms buyers, it may have been uh, Inner Arms out of Virginia or somebody like that, went and bought the whole lot. So that's why the most common variant of the 38 rifle that you will find in the U.S is the one with the SA stamp for the Finnish military property stamp and in a 7.35 caliber. Even though there were equal number of these 6.5s made, um, and this is where it gets strange, is now because of the Kennedy assassination and uh, uh, people just think they're rare, okay? The price on these has gone up and they, they sell like crazy. If a gun was rare, you might not see it come up on a gun broker auction more than an example of it, irregardless of condition, maybe once or twice in a year. If you had your thing set up where you got emails and that, there are a lot of guns I have a constant email alert when they're posted that, you know, a year goes by and you don't see any of them come up. As for these guns, with the idea that it's rare, I've seen like a dozen of these in the past four months come up for auction, and people bid on them and go go crazy and, and pay some astronomical prices. Uh, and again, I'm going to get into another video on pricing and grading guns and that because this one here is a good example. People ask for one of these, $475 is what the going buy it now price is for this model. And I've seen them cut down with all the hardware missing and the hand guard cut off about here. And same thing, I buy it now, 475. And somebody had, this one here is pretty worn. We'll take a closer look at it. There were a couple good ones. I mean, in nice shape, nice gluing, wood in good condition, kind of like my, and we'll look and do a uh, condition comparison with my uh, 7.35, which is like in 90% condition. And uh, 
you know, four, so it ended up going for four and a quarter. And you'll see the, the prices and the bidding gets crazy. Even this one here is not in good shape. It had a couple screws missing, that. And somebody was I fighting with it, me with it to the last minute. You know, I thought I was going to get it fairly reasonable, but with the shipping, handling, and the FFL transfer, I'll come out to about a little over $300, which I think is kind of high, but it is an interesting gun and a topic, and I wanted it, so I kind of went for it. And prices on Carcanos are, are getting ridiculous, but more on that, I'll get into videos on that. Okay, so it's not a, a widely produced variant of the Carcano rifles, or a version of it, you know, it's a uh, little over half a million. But also, again, it's not rare either. You can find these examples up for sale quite often, and, you know, regularly. So it isn't quite that rare. But it is popular, and people on this particular model are kind of fixated on it. I don't know if it has to do with the fact it was the model and caliber used during the assassination or not, but it kind of is, uh, you know, gained a fad or following on this particular gun. All right, so we'll take a closer look at the rifle, and then we'll take a look at uh, the two of them side by side. They're, they're just about identical, uh, except for the caliber markings. Okay, here we go. The stock's a tad bit different on the Model 38, but it's the same Carcano bolt action and the same magazine system, clip system, ammunition. Now, where the 38 changed is they use the fixed sight. And hopefully you can see where they mark the caliber on it. And like I said, that was because of the confusion of the... Uh, two different rifles. It uses a basically different handguard and a different style stock, which is a tad bit heavier and sturdier than the other versions. You got your side mounted sling swivels on it and the uh, front band here and the bayonet stuck. You know, front sights are typical. They turn it down, got a ring, and then a dovetail front sight. And this has two screws. The one screw basically holds this plate in here. And then this slides over the barrel, the stud for the bayonet. And that second screw goes through a hole in this piece here. So this is like two pieces. This slides on the barrel and doesn't come off. And then this will come off the barrel band. You can remove the stock. And like I said, because of the folding bayonet system, uh, the stock is cut out. So that when you fold the bayonet over, the blade has a place to go in there. So, that's the main points on it. And here we'll take a look at my uh, 7.3 caliber and compare it next to the Troop Special. And as you see, the Troop Special has a like slender, lighter stock. It's not as heavy. You know, it's similar lines, but it's thinner. This has been sanded. And, you know, has this nice thin uh, stock here. Handguard comes up to the 18-inch barrel, okay, as compared to the 21-inch uh, barrel. So you see there's a very small difference in the overall length of the weapon but this stock compared to this one is a bit more heavier it gives the rifle a little more heft and weight it kind of handles nicer too I like the uh, 38 style where the, you know this is a good gun it shoots well it's nice and light balance is nice but this here's got a little bit more heft to it so as a general purpose replacement that would be probably the way to go, and I think that's what the Italians were doing, but economic and political reasons kind of put an end to the project. Okay, another point I kind of forgot is with the Model 
38 with this bayonet configuration. All your other rifles, Italian rifles, the Troop Special and the Long Guns, all have a cleaning rod mounted underneath the barrel, other than the cavalry carbine. So the Model 38 kind of uses, this is my other one up here, uh, trap door in the butt plate, much like the uh, cavalry carbine with a three-piece cleaning rod. That was also a big difference. Uh, where they eliminated the under the barrel cleaning rod because of the uh, bayonet system and uh, went to the cavalry style carbine three piece cleaning rod that goes in there. Okay, which on the finished rifle, there were two rods in the buttstock. Okay, I'm not quite sure, nobody really showed you a clear picture, and there's only two. There should be three of these in there. And if you look, there, one's got this huge jag in there, and the other one's kind of got a slot. Let me screw them together and we'll see what they look like. Okay, and it kind of goes together like that, I guess. And the third one's missing because I tried it. This isn't quite long enough to go through the barrel. So I don't know if there's another type or whatever, or how you'd stick a handle on this, or if you just had enough room with a third one, just push it through, and then it would drop out of the rifle. But that one had two sections of cleaning rod with it. It's supposed to be three. And then you just disassemble them, put them together, and back in the little trap door they go. Just like that. And that's the cleaning rod setup. Okay, now we'll come and take a look at the markings on our 6.5 model from a different angle. Why they only manufactured them for a couple years and then stopped, I, I don't know. I don't know why they wouldn't keep on producing the weapon. Uh, but they, they did. You know, I'm, I'm not sure. It's kind of a curious thing. And... Uh, Another thing I found out that I had some questions here. If you look, you have the serial number. There's some little stampings on there. It's wartime production. You have a serial number on the receiver, which is unusual. You generally don't see that. Uh, Beretta. And then you have 1940. And then next to this date, there was a question from my transfer dealer. He goes, what is the Roman numerals meaning 18? What does that stand for? And I could not for the life of me answer that question until I was going through the book and the book explained what the Roman numerals meant was 1940 was when the gun was built and it was built in the 18th year of fascist rule. So they would mark the guns to these Roman numerals and the number uh, 18 Man, it's been, I guess, 18 years since Mussolini took over the country under the fascist era, kind of like the German uh, Reich. So that's what that means. That's something I didn't know, and I just learned that recently, what exactly that Roman numeral uh, designates. And as you can see, this gun, this gun's been used. The stock's kind of mismatched from... The serial numbers and it's been banged around. The bores, I'd say, good. You know, it's got rifling. It's not pitted, um, but it's been shot. It's it's worn a little and it shoots shoots pretty good. We got a video of me shooting it, so not too terrible. But that's a look at our little interesting variant. Had to move some things around because of lighting, but there's a look at our. Model 38 and the 6.5 caliber, the interesting little controversial variant of the Carcano rifle.